here. Do this one. Joe Aaron, I came from car audio SQ background and getting into home audio now. Wondering why DSP is only used for subs and nothing else, and if it could be used for LCR. Yes, use it for your home. But the, so my my answer to this was in the car audio, you have to have DSP if you want even decent sound. I know people say you can't get good sound in car audio. They haven't heard a good car audio system, so you can ignore the haters. Um, but yeah, you have to have a DSP to get even halfway decent sound in a car system. You don't have to have that in home audio. Like home home audio can certainly benefit from DSP. 100% and Odyssey is DSP, Dirac is DSP. So when you factor those things in, they a lot of systems pretty much have DSP at this point, but not to the extent that car audio folks are using them where we're using active systems and using like two-way active. So you set the crossover electronically that way, and then you can use shelf filters to help drive the frequency response the way you want it to be and shape the response in the car and everything. Because everything you hear in the car is if you don't have direct sound versus reflected sound, you've got all pretty much reflected sound. It all comes within like a couple milliseconds. So uh, that's why you have car audio with so many DSPs and not so much home audio with DSPs. Especially to think like if you're sitting off. So in home audio, you have the luxury of sitting primary seat, right? So everything is equidistant. In car audio, you don't have that. You got left side is really close to you for the driver's side, right? Driver's side is really close to you. And then right side is really far from you. And you've got to use time alignment. You've got to use level matching. You've got to use equalization to match the left to the right so you get a good balance and you have the focus of the center you know, at the center of the vehicle between the stereo width left and the right. And you, you want your sound stage to be encompassed between that left and right equilaterally, I guess, so to speak. So what you don't want is you don't want the male vocal or the female vocal. You don't want any of the center image to come from directly in front of you because what does that mean? That means that you have a squished left stage, right? So if you're sitting in the left seat as a driver's seat and you've got your center vocals coming from directly in front of you, well, number one, that's not really center. Number two is you've got a squished left stage because there's about this much room between your left boundary and your center. But on the right side, you've got about this much room between your center way over here to your right side. So totally uneven spacing between uh, your left, your center, and your right acoustically. So that's why you have to have it for car audio. But home audio, they don't have to worry about that. They can just sit dead center well again i would still say well, use dsp though let me let I me mean, just ask this how why should i why should i trust you when it comes to like time alignment stuff like do you do you really know about time alignment like aaron i don't I know mean, I, don't, I, don't I don't know, know. like <laughs> yeah did you happen to have a um something on your website, website? i had a calculator like or something and, and also factored in temperature and humidity <laughs> then maybe but you know uh, and actually late. that is all that's all i mean pretty basic calculations i mean like and when i say basic i'm i'm being serious you know it's not um facetious or anything it's you know it's based on distance versus speed of sound so anybody can figure this stuff out it's out there on the internet you just search your speed of sound calculation and you can figure out all right this is this far from me and this one's this far from me and how do i make them sound like they're equidistant uh, uh anyway you, i have it on my website brought in too i know see high five so Vega bro. in the house another car yeah. audio nut <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, let me let me see. Where's that <laughs> FOMO? I want to see how cheap I can get for the super chat. He yeah. tried one dollar, oh. but he can't comment. So I need you to start at one ninety nine and go down. The minimum. Yeah. Uh, let me take a crack at this though. Um. So Aaron, your answer was <laughs> there. It is. There it is. Aaron's answer was basically in car audio. You need it. Yeah, uh, you have to have it if you want a half. De if you even want a half decent system, I mean, in home audio, you can just set up the junkiest stuff and have better staging off the bat mm -hmm. than you do in car audio for sure. Yeah. So okay, if you uh, if you set up some decent, let's say bookshelf speakers or floor standing speakers, you could kind of get away with it, right? Not using yeah. DSP. I think that's the answer. But it doesn't right. mean that you can't benefit from it. I mean, that's what Absolutely. I do with the magical beans thing that John calls magical beans. Well, see, um, um, what what um, to kind of piggyback or provide a counterpoint for what Aaron was saying, my room is complete cluster. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not equidistant in between. Uh, I'm equidistant between my surrounds and my heights. But if I want to face the TV, I got to do this. And there's the <laughs> there are the main speakers. They're, my front stage is, is it's like a cockeyed straight left thing. So yeah. when Joe did the DSP, this is night and day difference. Oh, by the way, Joe, my line arrays also have DSP. Just so Yay, hey, I, know, well, I knew you like that. <laughs> I have to tune those for every show yeah. now. 
for every oh i know he does ESP the world i love that um yeah. i actually didn't use it they have like a, a base boost it's that's the dsp i didn't even <laughs> no, use it. DSP. that doesn't base count boost. <laughs> base boost of the dsp but but i mean they do they have some technology where like because the line array is doing 120 degree dispersion left and right and 30 degree dispersion up and down so i don't know if oh, that's cool. placement of the arrays like they're just you know one's this way one's that way one's you know to get it like that, but I don't know. Yeah, so um, I'm reviewing. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hold on. It's a wooden speaker? It's Yeah. Aren't they These all wooden? The, the dinas. Let me see if I can zoom into this. No, nah, you can't. Oh, that's yours. Uh, do over do there I need is, a uh, sub? That's the uh, mini DSP Flex. Oh, he's flexing on us. Uh oh. So uh, these speakers are actually set up as, uh, I don't know, what do you call these? Basically a bi-amp, right? So... One RCA is for the for the woofer, and then the other one is for the other oh, speakers. Active. active, active, active. Yes, yeah. active. Um, so I'm going to use the mini DSP to kind of make a better crossover for it. All right. You know. Um, so yeah, you can use it for home audio, and I actually would recommend that um, people do use DSP for full range, but you have to do it right. And that's what mm -hmm. that's what yeah. my whole stuff, my whole thing about magical beans and all that. My courses right. are going to be about how to do that properly, because mm -hmm. there are ways to do it improperly, in which case it's probably better to not do it at all. Correct. You know, just do the base. Yeah. The base always needs correction in a room, always needs correction. So uh, unless you're going to do the higher frequencies correctly, I, I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just worth reiterating again, too. You know, Danny here was specifically asking, mm. I think from the perspective of like an active system, you know, where in car audio, you know, the upper echelon of good car audio systems will run, it's it's all active. Nothing's mm -hmm. passive, right? Everything's run through a DSP and crossovers are set that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I Man, I rarely, hardly ever see anybody in home audio doing that because most people are running passive setups. You know, like the hardcore people, yeah, we'll do it. And and like when I've built my own speakers, I've mm. designed the crossover using a DSP, and then I'll I built a passive for it based off of that. And I try to get it as close to what I designed uh, via DSP that way. But it's do just so rare DSP... to see anybody use. Oh, sorry. Do do you also DSP them together? So you use it for the crossover, but do you also kind of use it to adjust your frequency response to how you want it to sound? Yeah. Oh well, if I'm yes, yeah, for a passive speaker, um, within reason, because mm. you know, like if you start doing a lot of things on the frequency response side, that's mm -hmm. more components and more money. And now it's a, a very complex passive speaker when you're thinking, I'd actually save money just keeping it active and buying amplifiers for it. So it, mm -hmm. it just kind of depends on your goal. Yeah, because I saw that you have a mini DSP DDRC88A, and yeah. I was just wondering if you were just using that for, um, you know, just for the crossover part, right. or if you were actually using some kind of like Dirac or something on top of it, Right, right. Yeah, so I use to kind of smooth out the response or not. Right. So before I even started measuring like stuff with the clipple, I took the speaker outside and and uh, tuned it, I guess, if you will, built the crossovers or designed the crossovers and EQ'd it to like an anechoic response outdoors, and then brought it in the house and then let direct kind of fix the bass in the in the room. So